legacy. When I think of legacy, I think of what you leave behind. So whether it's what you leave behind. So for me, I come from a family that has a very strong legacy. And because of that, everything or how I've been shaped or every, everywhere I go, I, I walk around representing the legacy that I've been so reminded of as a kid. My grandfather was a liberation fighter and he's a very respected man. Um, and now everywhere I go, my parents have told me, you know, this is who your grandfather was and this is what he's done and he's respected. So you need to hold yourself in such a manner. Awesome. It's like a family spirit. Um, they, the, the family teach you that you have always follow some certain rules that your parents hope you can get. Like my parents work really hard, something that I would always appreciate them. I think that could be called part of the legacy as well. For me, actually, a legacy means anything that's passed down, whether it's a way of life, uh, rules to abide by, um, how you treat others. I think that's the most important legacy that anyone can be given. To me, a legacy is something that, that can be passed on. And I always wanted to make a big difference in, in Christian education in China. And I wanted to incorporate a biblical worldview into Chinese educational system. I know it is hard, but it's worth to do it. Uh, I may not make a big difference in my generation, but I would like to be a stepping stone. For others, I believe one day they can make a bigger difference in their generation. When somebody says your name or thinks about you, what's the first emotion that it evokes? So what is the first thing? Is it does it leave a bitter taste in their mouth? It's when it's it's a lifelong practice of how you behave with not just with regards to when people are there, but also when they're not there. It's something that I believe has to come from deep within you to stand and choose a certain path, even though certain paths might be easier or more tempting, but to choose with what you believe is right. Uh, the legacy that I think I will be left by my parents and the one that I would hope to leave my children is a lifetime of uh, rules and sort of commandments that we would live by in order to lead the best life that we want. And I think from childhood uh, right through till adulthood, how you are treated by others and how you treat other people is the steps that would be taken in order to leave that legacy for the next generation. And you need to commit it. You need to commit to the right thing and uh, and do it consistently, no matter how hard it is. For me, it is uh, Christian education. And no matter how hard it is, I, I have to do it. I won't give it up. And for me, Christian education is a one child at a time. And even this one child, one day, I believe that they will bring a big change in the world. What I think about a good legacy is identify what matters to you. What is important to you? What are your values? And how do you want your life to touch others? What could make you, make you proud in the life that you are living so that it can really influence others? And be honest to yourself and even the community that you are living in. Be honest at wherever you find yourself, even outside your working place or even the church that you are. Be honest to people. Let people know who you are, where you are coming from, where you are going. And let people know that you are an honest person. Your saying can change people's life when you are honest all the time. People will learn 
from you. So be honest. Um, my parents always instilled in me, uh, whatever you want in life, we can always help you with, but you have to learn that money doesn't grow on trees. Whatever we've got, we've worked hard for that, and by tomorrow it could all disappear. Uh, you don't know how long that's for. Um, they always instilled in me from a young age, uh, go after your dreams, it doesn't matter what they are, you make a mistake, you learn from it, we'll, we'll be here to support you. Uh, you need anything financially, we will always be here, but by the age of 16 you're legally obligated to work. So when I was in school, I, um, I would work in the evenings after school, uh, just to earn some money. My parents always said, this money, whatever you want, you can buy yourself. Whatever you need, we can still provide you with. And that way we were able to learn, okay, we can get whatever we want if we work for it. Um, and my parents always gave me that sort of work ethic from a young age. If you want something throughout the year, it's not Christmas, it's not your birthday. We can get that for you, but you need to help around the house. Um, and at the time I thought, wow, that's so strict. But, you know, growing up, it actually made me realize, actually, that's probably a really good Thing to be taught from a young age, particularly since coming to China, because you hear a lot of um, one-child families. Uh, the children get whatever they want. They come across a little bit of hardship. They don't know how to deal with that. So one thing that my family gave me was a very good work ethic. They allowed me to do things that I wanted. They always gave me that unconditional support. They never pushed me to do things that I didn't want to do. Um, they never yelled at me for making a mistake. You learn from that. And they always taught me that we will always be here to give you what you want, but you've got to learn to stand on your own two feet. And I'm so grateful. That could be a good legacy. Uh, my family traditions, I hope it will give my children in the future uh, the courage to, to, to live a better life. If somebody's not proud of their legacy, they need to also understand that legacy is not inheritance. Well, for me, I, I differentiate legacy and inheritance. Um, I chose, I spoke about the, I spoke about my grandfather earlier. He was known to be, the main thing that he was known for was for the fact that he was honest and that he was a man of high integrity but I did not speak about the fact that they also named him fearless because he had a bad temper and for me when I chose the attributes of what I stood for what I connected to with regards to him and his legacy and what I could I want to continue is what is good so if you're not proud of what you might have had previously, I would suggest that you decide what you would be proud of and you take it from there. I grew up with a family that um, I have an absent father. So to answer your question that I can explain a little bit more that um, I think as a father always being missing, so I actually grew up with a lot of uh, hatred towards to the, uh, the male around me that I do not really want to be friends with them um, to a stage that I really hate them. But gradually when I grew up as an adult, I started to face this problem myself, which at the moment I think I'm okay and I'm capable of handling uh, friendship and relationships with my male friend in a good way. Uh, one thing helps me to uh, have a clear view or clear value on this issue is because I, uh, after I become a Christian, I feel my pastor and my a lot of Christian friends actually set a lot of good example for me that I can have confidence um, to see how my friends my, especially my male friends to, uh, uh, to have their marriage under a godly way, um, like how they devoted to their family to love their wife, love their kids. So when I um, become their friends, I learn from them, I see how they 
and they were showing their unconditional love and their understanding, supporting, even fostering their kids. I, I think I'm um, seeing a real example happening in my life that I can have confidence with them. Also, um, I think uh, when I read Bible and also um, uh, growing deeply within my faith that I gradually can understand that nothing can change a person but God himself can change a man. So instead I have a lot of unrealistic, unrealistic expectation towards father or any male character in my life that I think I just um, kind of interact them without any um, unrealistic expectation but uh, trying to understand them without judgment so that I just uh, they will be responsible for their action but God will uh, manage them and also uh, change them in the way that he can but I wouldn't really put myself in a situation that I expect myself to change them God's help <laughs> is like a curse um, and especially in China lots of traditional family they have the wrong value and sometimes um, you will pass this to your next generation automatically so that could be a bad legacy so if you are a Christian and you believe God you need some power from God to correct those I really want to change the legacy of my family because in my country, my family didn't begin as Christians. They were worshiping some little adults. They are traditionalists. But in our world now, we know God and He is the Savior of us. He created us. So I really want to change this so that in the future, all my family members will come to know God, worship Him, and do what is being right. So that is what I really want to do to change the family legacy.